Thank you, Kim. And also thank you for suggesting this title. You know, you know Spain, and I think it's a, it's a fitting uh, title for what I'm going to present. Um, I, I was um, trying to think uh, in terms of also what, uh, what uh, Philip said before, whether we are at a turning point uh, and uh, exploring uncharted territory in Spain. And I would, for Spain, I would glance at uh, that statement because the Jewish question practically constitutes uh, its own era spanning genre in the Spanish cultural imagination. And the things that are happening now will present, that will present all are very familiar. Maybe it has uh, it, it has changed in, in intensity, but there are so many connecting threads uh, in a country where anti-Semitism has never been taboo. That's probably the, the case of why Spain is an outlier with other Western European countries. Um, the list of negative attributes or powers according to Jews continues to have widespread acceptance. Uh, Jews are manipulators, liars, powerful, evictive, conspirators, parasites, exploiters, tribal, oppressors, cunning, disloyal, heartless, calculating, and cruel. Anti Semitism has also a common verbal currency in Spain's uh, language. The latest version of the Real Academia Española. Dictionary of the Spanish language, which recommends the actual use of words, includes to this day the term judiada, which is defined as a multitude or group of Jews and a bad move or action that harms someone. And one of the meanings of judío to this day in the dictionary is a person greedy or usurious. Even though the presence of actual Jewish people was essentially stamped out with the expulsion of 1492. Anti-Jewish motives remain firmly entrenched, not only in the Spanish language, but also in the literature, liturgy, and popular traditions. One wellspring of anti-Semitism has stemmed from the fear that Jews and Judaism pose an existential threat to Spanish national Catholic identity. The blood cleansing statutes, which discriminated against Jews who had converted to Christianity and their descendants, reflect an early Spanish obsession with lineage and blood community. The next incarnation of anti-Semitism became began to take root in Spain as Spain modernized at the end of the 19th century. Amidst ongoing political strife and ideological unrest leading up to and during the Second Republic, 1931 and 1936, Anti-Semitic cabals found a fertile ground to flourish. Uh, so, uh, next slide. Uh, this slide shows the uh, translations of a very successful publication, thousands of or, uh, uh, very large editions of the Protocols of the Arab of China, and uh, thirty. And um, I'm sure the poster follows. This is a poster of 1933 in the Spanish Republic, the right wing coalition theatre. In Spain, the myth of the Contubernio Judeo Masonic, of the Jewish Freemason conspiracy, found favor among the different factions representing the conservative classes that saw themselves threatened by the reforms adopted by the Spanish Republic government that jeopardized the age old status quo in the country. And during the Civil War, which uh, was from 1936 to 1939, the Contubernio, the Smith, served as a unifying propaganda tool in the multi-sided nationalist camp. It permitted traditionalists, fascists, monarchists, and the Catholic Church to portray their enemies, liberal republicans, having separatists, socialists, and anarchists, as allies or beholden to the service of Jewish organizations or of Jewish interests. Jews, according to the Smiths, the Smith were the puppet masters of the anti-Espanian anti-Spain. The Frankowitz side applauded the German anti-Semitic policy, including the Kristallnacht the program. Uh, the Granada-based Ilegal, this paper, uh, wrote in November 19, 
1938. This is the great enemy of Franco Spain, international jury, which has seen in our homeland an easy prey for the policy of turbulence and castrating concessions that began with the 14th of April, the 14th of April, the day of the proclamation of the Second Spanish Republic. The press also likes to remind its readers that Spain had been at the vanguard of the struggle against Jews. Nazis were only providing continuity and confirming the decision of kings Isabella and Ferdinand to expel them from the country in the 15th century. At the same time, the Stürmer like anti Jewish rhetoric was adopted or directly reproduced from German sources for Spanish readership. These are headlines. Uh, in the days following the, the pogrom night, it was done at pogrom night, and the energetic uh, measures adopted against the Hebrews. How does the German people respond to the Jewish provocations? From 1945 onwards, and I'm telling this, and I'm providing this largely historical context to, to situate. What's happening now? What's happening in the last uh, 20 years, but particularly since October 7th. So, from 1945 onwards, in order to strengthen its international position, the Franco regime took great pains to distance itself from its past links with Nazi Germany, and in this period, openly political anti Semitic incitement, like that of the Nazis, was abandoned. However, the more traditional and religious dimensions of Jew hatred remain intact. The stereotype of the Jewish usurer, and the legends of Jewish ritual crimes were widespread, and schools and churches continue to propagate this myths well into the democratic period. This is a uh, school book in the 1960s, it was very Spanish, it was uh, most Spanish schools, that contained a, a short chapter with a Jewish flag, Jews, little kids, this is Dominito de Duval in San Costa, but there are several others. That, uh, the, the most famous one is the one in La Guardia, the town of Toledo, uh, Cristobalito, the holy child of La Guardia, also um, uh, uh, and this, uh, according to the myth, killed uh, by the Toledo Jews. In the 1960s, the Franco regime relaxed its grip. Jews were allowed to immigrate. Synagogues were opened and the communities could hold discrete activities. These were very small communities that came mostly from uh, Spanish Morocco, but at that time already uh, uh, independent now. How did the democratic period turn the page on this specific past? During democracy, important transformation took place at the institutional, the legal level. 1980, the law of religious freedom implemented the new constitution's provision for freedom of religion. However, many things remained uh, unaddressed. At the turn of the century, Spain saw the emergence of a very strong movement founded on the idea of shedding light on the darkest period of Spanish history, the reign of Francoism that had been swept under the rug in the wake of the transition to democracy. Antisemitism, however, remains a blind spot in the so-called so movement to recuperate memory history. A recent example couldn't be more telling. When German Vice Chancellor Robert Habeck spoke in November uh, 2023 about historical responsibility in regard to the tide of anti-Semitism and violent anti-Zionism in Europe, the matter was dismissed among progressive circles, particularly as a symptom of German guilt. In other words, is that nothing? Really to do with us in Spain. So the bitter traces of earlier waves of hatred have not faded away. Whitewashed and unacknowledged as a problem, the past rears its ugly head, finding favor not only among far right groups or nostalgics of the Franco regime, but also among vast swaths of the Spanish population, the intelligentsia included. Survey data and qualitative studies indicate that in Spain, overly derogatory and stereotypical comments. How Jews are still used and tolerated. I, I want to bring this, this slide, which is an IDF study, which in this data you always have to take with a grain of salt. But I found it interesting the way also uh, they present the data. Uh, 
generally lower in Western Europe and higher in Eastern Europe. Well, Spain is closer to Eastern European countries in this index score of anti Semitism of the Europe. Studies also show that in Spain, that Spain is one of the poorest scoring countries uh, in terms of the population's knowledge of Jews and Judaism, and with a few respondents personally knew someone who was Jewish. The absence of real life interaction with actual Jews ultimately limits discussion about Jews to the ethereal, inherited anti Semitic cultural imagery, reinforcing stereotypes about their secrecy. They're hiding behind different flags, their deceptiveness, and their little advanced special interests, and so on. Traditional manifestations of anti Judaism continue to exist and appear in popular and religious culture in Spain. For instance, uh, in the Spanish city of Leon, locals toast Easter with a kill Jews cocktail. Matar judíos means you go out and drink this uh, wine. Uh, the, I think it was a forum who had an article this uh, last April about it. And uh, it was interesting because she asked, uh, the, the journalist asked the bartender and said, for us it's normal, it's foreigners who find this strange. Um, and as, as I mentioned, the Santo Niño, uh, La Guardia in Toledo, uh, uh, is, con is uh, to this day honored annually as the patron saint of La Guardia, according to this medieval blood library that was honored by uh, this uh, uh, child saint. But still, while anti Judaism derived from folklore stubbornly, stubbornly survived the passage of time, the most salient and pervasive expressions of anti Semitism appear in relation to the state of Israel and its depiction in media and political discourse. And here I, I need to provide some, uh, some explanation, because one rare area where conservative and left wing parties coincided in the mid 70s and 80s is in their hostility towards the state of Israel. Why is this? The traditional ties of friendship with the Arab world. This was an axis uh, of Spanish foreign policy that was inherited from the Franco regime uh, and that uh, lasted until 1986, because until then, uh, diplomatic relations with the state of Israel were not established. And by then, a framework to see Israel in a negative light is set by anti Jewish stereotypes was deeply anchored. While the conservative parties have shifted towards a more nuanced or sometimes openly supportive perception of Israel, the negative image of the Jewish state has remained firm in the far left, and it's, maybe that is the, the, the novelty now seeping into the uh, liberal mainstream, including uh, the Soviet party, which is the government party of the socialist party. During the years of the two intifadas, throughout the Lebanon War of 2006, the uh, military operations in Gaza in 2009, the flotilla events of 2010, newspapers and magazines published cartoons, as you see here in the slide, the Palestinian children crucified to Stars of David, Judaism depicted as a religion of hatred and rancor, allusions to Jewish media and financial power, or to the victimization and blackmail to which they subject the world. Critique of Israel embraced without any inhibition or intellectual contradiction the stereotypes that once were the exclusive components of anti Judaism and anti Semitism. This uh, tweet, it's uh, Kilani, the left wing party, which is also part of the tradition government now, uh, uh, they tweeted this image uh, during the visit of Obama in 2016, which went into to explain much by uh, how this the, the traditional stereotypes are uh, are applied and also by you know, racist stereotypes and the black stereotypes are also present in this in this uh, poster. The war between Israel and Hamas since October 7 has brought this issue, uh, as I said, into its maximum intensity. And I uh, you know, presenting here in this slide the more recent cartoons, but as you see, there is not really a, much of a difference compared to what happened during the, during the, tour, uh, during the Second Intifada or the First Lebanon War. Um, also, newspapers are not only left newspapers, this is from La Guardia, the, the, 
the object in the background. And the director of the Catalan main paper, La Vanguardia, titled an editorial in October 2022, Revenge Has No End, and playing on the eyes of my ancient spirit idol. Also, a renowned professor of philosophy, you see this, this other, another image, published an op ed in the online daily El Confidencial, which I would say is a center uh, publication, titled The Jews and Their Intelligence. That had on yet another stereotype to conclude that human intelligence can often be the great ally of evil. Another painting piece, which is not on the slide, uh, published in the left wing daily Publico, concluded that nobody dared to criticize Israel because there are Jews placed in positions of power, and quote, the powerful lobby will have ruined your existence, your professional career, the government of the day of the company. It is usually European expats or exchange students or foreign correspondents in Spain, uh, these are the ones who usually point to the anti Semitic elephant in the room. A Madrid correspondent, correspondent of the Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung uh, in November 2023 titled aptly his piece Israel aus alter Israel hostile of old tradition, calling attention to the fact that the trafficking of anti Semitic stereotypes. In the Spanish mainstream media's coverage of the Israel Hamas war, does not cause outrage, outrage, and Israeli challenge. In Spain, where the memory of the Holocaust and knowledge of Jewish history is ne negligible, anti Semitism remains unchecked, and anti Semitic position, positions can be openly held, often in the ignorance that they are anti Semitic. In some, given the small presence of Jews in the country, approximately 0.01% of the population, it's an estimate of 40,000 people in a, in a country of 40 million. In a country with a long and substantial anti Semitic tradition, Israel becomes a lightning rod in which attitudes and opinions regarding Jews converge. The conflict in Israel feeds and paves the way for flare ups of long simmering prejudices. Spanish sociology is imperme impermeable to criticism. Not surprisingly, pointing out uh, the problem often triggers anti-Semitic attitudes and reactions. His existence is denied, and denial can also take an anti-Semitic shape with accusations of Jewish victimism or Chinese propaganda. I would say this is similar to other EU countries, but in this case, I would say that in Spain, uh, the, the presence, the salience of uh, latent anti-Semitic stereotypes is much more much clearer, much, much more visible. Spanish students in solidarity, here are a few images of the encampment. Spanish students in solidarity with Palestine uh, that were encamped in you know, May and June under the banner of Zionists out of the university were painted images like you see there, a bloodthirsty star of David, labeled cartoon monster. These students certainly do not consider themselves anti Semites. Another image um, where you see, the, I can see about two of these uh, individuals are government ministers, Yone Bedarra, um, and also members of parliament, and Irene Montero from Podemos, which is uh, a government party, who walk behind the terror that uh, mentioned before that you see also in many other countries. It's the terror slogan, stop the genocide, commit the genocide, right? However, I guess in Spain, Spain is probably the only country where ministers of the government were uh, endorsing that, that, that slogan, walking behind that, that uh, banner. So everything that is grouped under the label uh, uh, anti-Zionism would be free from, some, from such accusations and condemnations, even if it draws from unequivocally anti-Semitic tropes. And I'd like to add a few things about uh, the political situation and also thinking of, of who are the actors and what are the alliances and what consequences this is bringing. Um, as I said, Podemos, Sumar, and Sumar is again a coalition of different left-wing parties, like the Vida, are part of the coalition government 
and they are pushing successfully the, the, the Socialist Party, which is the new uh, party in the coalition, to adopt a hard line towards Israel. Um, Spain, together with, as you know, uh, together with Ireland and Norway, recognize the Palestinian state, and also Spain is the only EU country, uh, I understand, that joins South Africa's case at the International Court of Justice accusing Israel of genocide. It is in this context, with this uh, strong pressure from its uh, left, uh, from its partner, from its coalition partner on the left, that the Socialist Party is turning a blind eye to their partner's blatant anti-Semitism, despite the fact that this government adopted in line with countries, uh, uh, with other European countries, a strategy to combat anti-Semitism and foster Jewish life. But the, the, the so, uh, Minister of Education openly endorsed the student encampment uh, without any mention to the hate speech that was uh, rampant uh, and as you can tell from the, from, uh, from the posters and so on. Four Spanish universities have already cut ties with Israeli academic institutions at Complutense University, which is my alma mater and where I also taught for several years. All the faculty has been asked to inform the office of the vice president of research whether they plan to attend conferences in Israel, co-author with Israeli scholars, or plan to initiate research projects with Israeli uh, universities. I know from colleagues that they are ignoring this uh, request, but of course it is a sign that is quite symptomatic and it has an intimidating effect on the faculty. Even the chairs of medieval Jewish history have been under scrutiny. Why? Well, the circulating question is the Jews are funding, probably funding these, these chairs. To conclude, Spain has always suffered this kind of low octane anti Semitism, lingering in the, linger the backdrop since 49. And uh, because prejudice has become normalized, the larger population, not only now, but I would say uh, it, 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 for, for decades, uh, simply can come to terms with antisemitism's traditional and contemporary forms, denying that it exists at all. The country's small uh, Jewish community is carefully documenting the incidents, calling on the public institutions, media, politicians, to do something about the right ground on anti-Semitism, but uh, one wonders if uh, anybody is here. Success rate is very, very limited. Let me show you a couple more images. This, this image, which is also, this, this is an event taking place at the University of Florence that is presented by the dean of, of the Faculty of Political Science and Sociology with this, uh, with this image, university uh, facing I come to my conclusions. Persistence of anti-Semitic discourse, however, with a low level of violent incidents, but of course with a significant growth during the era of conflict in Israel and Palestine. Um, this everydayness of anti-Semitism, you know, non-recognition and denial of anti-Semitism as a particularly Spanish feature. Uh, and then polarization, polarization. I do not have time to go into this, but who is, it, who is um, bringing up the anti-Semitism accusation? It is particularly the far right. So this uh, is creating a, a scenario in which the accusations are automatically uh, dismissed. Um, um, well, I, I guess here we have also commonalities with other European countries, with the far right embracing Israel and uh, and accusing their adversaries of anti-Semitism with or without reason. Very often they have, they, they, they are obviously uh, right. So another, which I didn't want to put on the power point, is the fact that the Jewish community is not only small and weak, but is also um, rather dysfunctional. So in, in the sense that organizing, coming together under in this moment with this uh, massive uh, uh, onslaught of anti-Semitism, 
Yeah, you're basically not prepared to respond. I leave it here. Thank you for your.